Animating something in Blender, then putting it over into After Effects to polish it up, such as this animation that you're seeing now, is a fantastic workflow. In 2.79 and below, you would be able to do this using the After Effects export function. Unfortunately, during the beta of Blender 2.8, that plugin didn't work. I'm glad to report that it is now working as intended. So sit back and relax and let me explain how to use this plugin and what it's good for. My name is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and welcome to this tutorial. So to enable the plugin, we're first going to come up here to our edit, then preferences, and then we're going to navigate to our add-ons tab and make sure we turn on testing. We can then search for After Effects and you should see that it comes up with an import, export, export, Adobe After Effects JSX. Now this is still in testing, but it is working now. So you just wanna tick this checkbox here to enable it. Then after that, if you navigate to File, Export, you should see a new export option of a .jsx. Now, this is not gonna export a cube or any type of geometry data. What it is gonna export is gonna export positional data, camera data, and light data. If I have a cube, it's gonna export that as a null object in After Effects. So let's do this now. I'm just gonna do a very quick animation of this camera. So, you know, just do a lock, location, rotation, go to frame 40, kind of zoom that in here, make it a pretty interesting camera move. Very, very terrible. But it should illustrate the power and potential that this add-on has. And it's great to see that it's now working in 2.8. So now that we have our very terrible animation set up, I'm just gonna press A to select everything. And then I'm gonna go over to File, Export, Adobe After Effects. And then you wanna make sure that all of this is selected to on. So what it's gonna do is gonna uh, export the animation data, export the active camera. So what that is gonna tell After Effects is actually gonna tell it the focal length and all the necessary details to match the camera one to one, which is fantastic. It's also going to export the objects positional and rotational and scale data in the form of a null object. So find a place to save this as. And I'm gonna save it as After Effects Tutorial. Excellent. So we're just gonna export that. Now in After Effects, now I'm working on the CS6. So if you're working on CC, it may be a little bit different, but not too much. The same functionality should still be available. We come down to File, Scripts, Run Script File. Then navigate to where you saved your JSX file. And this is your JSX file. It should look something like this. Then open it up. Then it's gonna come up with a prompt composition name. You can leave that as is, or you can name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call this Blender Tutorial. Now in your project settings, you should have a new composition called Blender Tutorial. So let's just open this up. Now, as you can see, we have our light object as a null, our object, and if I scrub through here, you'll see that we also have our camera animation. This is really fantastic. And it's great for, let's say, if you wanted to do some composition within After Effects of a scene that you created in Blender to get a bit of spatial awareness. So if you wanna use, let's say, a lens flare plugin, for example, all that you would have to do is link it up to this null object up here, which is the light, and you would just link the positional values into that null object. So it just creates for a very easy 
and not no guesswork required sort of approach to editing and compositing scenes within After Effects that you have created in Blender. Uh, because let's face it, After Effects, while it may say it's got 3D capabilities, isn't really for editing in 3D. You're much better in editing in something like Blender and then um, using that information to drive your effects in After Effects. So if I was then to create a new solid, let's just create a nice deep blue solid. And then I'm going to make that a 3D object. I want my transform tools of this position, scale, rotation. There we go. Let me get my uh, rotation of this. So let me just copy the rotation plug it into there and then I'm just going to scale that down a little bit and yeah done look at that it's pretty great so if we compare that to our blender you should see that the camera movement should be indistinguishable You know, aside from not being in sync. <laughs> but yes, very powerful, especially if you're editing a 3D camera, you want to do it in a native 3D program because the editing in After Effects would just be a pain. And in this industry, you want to be as efficient as possible. So I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that it is showing you some of the potential that this plugin has for increasing the efficiency of your workflow. If you've learned something new or thoroughly enjoyed the tutorial, smash that like button and consider subscribing and joining our nearly 4,000 subscribers. Also remember to hit that bell button to be notified on a new video's release. You can support this channel by visiting its Gumroad store where you may find an assortment of digital assets for your projects. You can also visit my website, foulsonfantasy.com where you can find an entire section dedicated to tutorials and art assets. Learn at your leisure in an environment dedicated to tutorials. And again, thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.